I recently went to two Ruby conferences and I hung out with the brightest minds in the Ruby community and I thought I'll just ask them certain questions and one question was what do they think is the future of software engineering especially in regards to AI? Uh, I think that the that we're gonna have less space for mediocre or we're gonna have less space for coders who are not curious. Uh, right now you can kind of get away with not really being into code and just sort of making features for your application and just kind of not really digging into why something's broken or how it broke or how to fix it correctly. I think we're like, when as AI does more of the basic coding, we're not going to have those easy bugs. It's going to be super gnarly bugs that really require a deep understanding of the language and a deep understanding of how the application is written and going to figure out what's broken on the where AI can't go because it doesn't have uh, intimate knowledge of all the different pieces. Eileen is quite famous. Um, she wrote certain contributions in the Ruby Ruby on Rails core. And um, I think she works on very deep problems. And I think this is quite quite correct what she says. All the simple jobs in software engineering, they're threatened by AI, but the, with the deep ones, the very important ones, um, they probably don't go away. So it will be, a lot of code will be written very, very quickly in the very near future, in the next couple of years. We'll see massive uh, shift, like a monumental shift. Uh, will not affect as much yet the uh, super high-end developer potentially and one that's really uh, architecting a lot of, uh, of an overarching solution maybe but in time it might get to there pretty quickly in five years maybe right? it looks like that's kind of the direction same answer and i fully agree with them i think ai will take over a lot of it um but uh there is still a need for programmers especially in requirements engineering and domain knowledge and, and all that stuff translating business into software. Um, but it will be a huge change with AI making traditional programming pretty obsolete in the next 30 years. Okay, traditional programming will be obsolete in the next five years or so. Interesting. I feel a little bit like it's overhyped at the moment in the sense that um, there is you know, a lot of things that we could, like that people are trying that are just working up to a certain point and then fall apart. And it's this falling apart thing that really irks me at the moment. So the question is, can we find things where using something like large language models actually makes sense? And then I think we still need people who train these models to build software around it. And I don't think that any of that can be done by or with AI very well. So I, I think, as, like if you're asking about asking me about if I'm afraid of AI, I think I'm more afraid of the effect it has on the market right now than I'm actually afraid on what kind of effect it has on our profession. Good call. I can imagine that the AI hype we have now is like the 2000s that just built out a lot of infrastructure and now we have the global internet as, as we know it now, as basically was built in the 2000s. Maybe we have the same in AI, you know, everybody investing into certain things. But yeah, the market effects are for sure there. I think we see it already. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but I think it's going to be awesome. <laughs> um, so it's uh, currently a time, point in time where the, the technology, the, the new AI technology is so um, disrupting. And I don't know, we don't know yet how it comes. Will it cost our, all our jobs or will all the jobs change? I don't know. I don't know yet. It's very interesting, very exciting to be in that moment right now and, and also the experience to shape the future. I don't know. Let's see what brings. I'm um, really excited about what's coming. I like this positive notion of Henning here. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's great what's possible now. I think the, the common theme like around all the AI topics, um, including in the engineering area is that we have like way smaller teams achieving way like much much more than, than before um, since you know like you still have to get the like the entire understanding uh, like you have to understand the concepts uh, but i think it's like a like a jetpack right like uh, if you use ai tools you can build well things way beyond the the boundaries which you which you used to have so uh, like smaller teams uh, bigger scope that's what I'm seeing already in my work. I'm, I'm just able to write JavaScript in a way that I wasn't able to do so before. Well, that's very interesting now. Rado stuff. Um, Rado is a, is a senior engineer who worked at Product Hunt before, so I'm, I really respect him. Let's see what he says. My initial thought is that 
AI right now is a lot like uh, autocomplete was in the 90s and having having like script languages in the 80s and all of that so it's it's going to be a step change but it won't be like exponential we don't need developers anymore but at least i hope so okay yeah uh, i also agree we will have some more time to run with uh, the current stacks and but we need to embrace to be able to do much more with less manpower i think that programming is always changing so i, I don't think it's going to be the same thing like in the future like in the middle term, term future and in the long term one but I, I imagine that we're going to still be programming, but maybe on a different level. On a different level? Okay. So more high level. Um, not talk so many, um, code so many routines anymore and more algorithms. I'm not sure about that. Um, nobody knows. Okay, let's see what Steven has to say. My sense is that we are going to really come to appreciate the leverage points in programming. So I think the top programmers or like the programmers maybe who keep their jobs, I don't know exactly how it'll fall out, are going to be people who are able to think really cohesively and coherently about problems and solutions. And the minutia of like, how do I write this particular language, which gets uh, interpreted into this particular VM, which gets converted into this particular assembly, which could become this particular um, executions on this particular CPU, like that's going to get more and more abstracted and less and less essential. Um, but being able to think very precisely, right? like at the end of the day, we are trying to tell a rock that has electricity in it how to be useful. And that requires a high degree of precision but um, it also requires a real breadth of understanding in a problem domain and how different solutions with different sets of trade-offs make the most sense for the particular end goal that we're pursuing. So I think programming is going to shift more and more towards quote-unquote like solution architecture, um, still ultimately having to communicate with great precision to the computer but maybe the differences in the languages will start to fall away or just sort of converge into a general um, area as we find like, as we maybe approach a universal programming language to describe with sufficient precision what outcomes we need the computer to produce. Okay, so that's interesting. So he basically says, let's say we have a, like a breadth of knowledge and then we have precision let's say precision is something that goes in the other dimension let's say here and he says we have no more abstractions that we don't need this precision anymore so being a good ai engineer and engin engineer using using ai needs more breadth like what's possible and less precision so are we more going here i'm not sure about that yes um for example in, in my work i don't need to code so much javascript i can have ChatGPT generate certain things so i think i don't need so much precision but also, it will give me much more breadth of it. So yeah, maybe we're, we're converging more into something like this, where we just need to have a more a, like a solid foundation, doesn't need to know everything, but a solid foundation and just a bit less precision than usual. Would that be something that, that Steven is saying here? Or did, this, did, did, that, did I understand this wrong? Um, how about you leave a comment on Twitter or on YouTube comments?